Okay. Uh, students, so good afternoon, all of you. Am I audible to all of you? And can you see the screen? If yes, please say yes in the comment box. Yeah, am I audible to all of you? Okay, Ganesh. So see here. I hope everything is going fine. Video on audio. Okay. So let us see. So I welcome you all to the very first lecture on this course of basic thermodynamics. And my name is Vinay Kumar, and I'm going to deal over this course to all of you. Okay. So this thermodynamics, before introducing the subject to all of you, I would, I would like to give you a very specific name for this, which is classical thermodynamics. Okay. So basically this name could be more appropriate for this subject that we are going to deal in this course, which we'll know why in the next class. Okay. So before straight away going into the course contents and of the course plan, how this course is going to be, I would like to, uh, you know, uh, give you the basic out outcome of this course. Okay. So I hope thermodynamics is not a very new course to all of you. You might have heard this name thermodynamics in your schooling and in plus two level. Correct? This thermodynamics, if you want me to say, this is basically the science that deals with conversion of conversion of heat to work. Okay, so this is the basic science and many of you are fam quite familiar with this applications of conversion of heat to work. Many of you might be using your bikes to go to your colleges to attend the lectures and all. So there your bike where the engine is the core part of it converts the heat energy that is supplied into work. Correct? Our body, if you take human body, it produces sweat because of so many metabolic reactions that happens inside the body. So if you see the temperature of the human body is somewhat high when compared to the outer temperatures in winter and it's somewhat low when compared to the atmosphere temperature in summer. Correct? So this human body also produces some heat and there happens some heat interactions between your body and the surroundings. So our body itself is a big source of some thermodynamics uh, that's happening inside us. Okay. So now coming to the engineering applications of thermodynamics, uh, right from your bikes or simple applications, if you take home appliances at the first, you will go for the pressure cooker that operates on the principle of thermodynamics with temperature limits and all these things. Correct. And your bikes as well as uh, from your household appliances like bikes and all to the big power plants that happen, uh, that, that run based on the principle of thermodynamics. At every point of our life, this thermodynamics is uh, very strongly connected to us. Okay, so this course, I think many of you might have a basic idea what this course is on because of your knowledge on class 12 level and all. So right now, uh, before uh, going to further advanced things, I would like to give you some course outline or how this course is going to be commenced. Okay, so for that, let me introduce you some chapters which I would like to specify, I mean, classify this subject into. Okay, so the first chapter I would like to tell you is introduction to thermodynamics. This is the first chapter we deal with introduction to thermodynamics. Now, basically, in this course, I will provide you what's the basic technologies that are being used in thermodynamics and also I will. Yeah, we'll go to basic terminologies. Basically, we'll know what is the thermodynamic system and all other things. Basically, the terminologies that are associated with thermodynamics, then we'll look at different properties of a system like pressure, temperature, and all these things. Okay, so this is how that gives you a clear overview of this thermodynamics. And in this particular first chapter, you will be given all the definitions, basic terminologies that are being involved in thermodynamics. Okay, so second chapter is all about energy. And it in, its interaction between bodies and its interaction between you can write systems energy. Then we'll see uh, what energy and all of a system, and then we'll see what happens. What are different uh, thermodynamic phenomena that are going to happen when you provide some energy onto the system, or if you take out some energy onto the system from the system? Okay. So see here, this is what the second chapter is mainly focused about. And energy, you know, there are many forms of energy like heat energy, mechanical energies, then potential energy as well, of course, which is again a sub form of mechanical energy. Then 
uh, you know, electric energy, magnetic energies. So all these are different forms of energies. But our main motto is heat and mechanical work. So these are the two basic forms of energy that we, uh, you know, restrain our focus on to. So we'll see different heat interactions and work interactions of different processes that happen in a system. Also, this this is all what about the second chapter is considered. Concerned. So coming to third chapter, in first chapter, introduction to thermodynamics, we'll go across something called closed systems. Okay. So in closed, we'll know what is a closed system and open system. Uh, in tomorrow's class, but before that, I would like to give you some brief idea. A closed system is generally one in which only energy interactions can take place. Okay, means there is the mass interactions can't take place. So in the third chapter, we'll see energy analysis of closed systems. Energy analysis of closed systems, and this closed systems is also called control mass systems control mass systems by which we got this name i'll clarify you when the time i'm going for the first chapter okay so energy analysis of closed system means when mass is not permitted to go in or out of the system but if there is some energy interaction that can take place then we'll see what are the effects of the energy interaction to the closed system with respect to the out of the system basically we call them as surroundings okay so this is our third chapter then coming back I mean, going ahead to the fourth chapter, we see energy and mass analysis. Energy and mass analysis of energy and mass analysis of open systems. In bracket, these open systems are also called controlled volume systems. Why this open system is called as control mass system? I mean, why this open system is called as control volume system and why this closed system is called as control mass system, we'll discuss in the first chapter, very in the very first chapter, introduction to thermodynamics. Okay, so we, this is where we define uh, energy and mass analysis of open systems. And these third and fourth chapters, basically uh, here, yeah, this third and fourth chapters will give you the basic idea of different laws of thermodynamics. Okay, like first first law of thermodynamics and zeroth law of thermodynamics that we deal when we deal with uh, temperature. Okay, so after this fifth chapter, where energy and mass analysis of open systems. Basically, before going to the fifth chapter, in fourth chapter, we after framing the energy analysis equations or the basic conservation equations of energy for this open systems, we deal with applications of that, uh, you know, open system energy analysis. For example, we deal uh, several thermodynamic devices like nozzles, turbines, all these things, and we see what are the energy formulations that are available for us in dealing with this thing. So in our course of this time, now we'll come to know the second law of thermodynamics, which is one really important law in course of thermodynamics. And this second law has a main impact because you know, with the help of this law, why, I mean, in what's the direction in which a process occurs. For example, if I ask you, if I put a cup of hot coffee in this room, then definitely you know the heat gets transferred from the hot coffee to the room because your intuition tells that you have seen this uh, many times in your life, correct? But suppose if I ask you the same question, in what's the direction of the process in two complicated systems, then you know this second law gives us, gives us the actual answer for the direction of the process. Okay, so in second law of thermodynamics, we learn about different processes that, I mean, different energy analysis of that processes and the directions in which this process will happen. And this second law basically gives us the concept of heat engines, which is important uh, in case of thermodynamics because, you know, engine is the heart of thermodynamics, correct? Because producing some mechanical work by giving some heat input is the main concern of the subject thermodynamics. So we'll see what the maximum efficiencies the engines can have and all these things in this second law of thermodynamics. So this is where we'll go for sixth chapter. Now come, I mean fifth chapter. And over this course, we'll meet with some important parameters which are called entropy. Okay, this entropy is a very simple topic that you can deal with. This is just an another topic in thermodynamics and this entropy has really a big significance on all the processes that's happened. Okay, then while learning this entropy, we look at something called third law of thermodynamics. So if you see, there are total four basic laws of thermodynamics, the zeroth law, first law, second law, and third law. And by the time we finish entropy, we'll be in, in a position that we could, 
you know, uh, we could have a clear idea about all these three laws. Okay. So once, if you know uh, about entropy, we'll see uh, like what are the different uh, entropy changes. Entropy is basically a property. So we'll see what are different entropy changes that's happening in a process between systems when a system is executing a process. Okay. So we'll see this. In seventh chapter that we deal with, we'll go for availability and irreversibility. This is one really important chapter, uh, you know, basically in the course of this thermodynamics, because, you know, uh, in summer, you, you may experience a lot of power cuts when compared to winter, correct? Because even though the same energy input you are giving, uh, you know, your output decreases. We'll see why all these things are happening in this chapter of availability. And we see what are the basic definitions of availability and irreversibility. Okay. So see here. After completion of availability and irreversibility, we'll go for one really important chapter, properties of pure substances. Properties of pure substances. We go to the chapter, they basically will define what is a pure substance and what are the properties that we are interested in finding these properties of pure substances. Okay, so basically we deal all the terms like internal energy, then enthalpy, we'll discuss all these terms during the course of time. But for the time being, you, it's enough for you to recognize there are certain terms like this in thermodynamics. Okay, so properties of pure substances, that's what uh, we discussed as our chapter number eight. And finally, before the course gets finished, we'll go for one important chapter called thermodynamic relations. Thermodynamic relations. Okay, so basically, this uh, this is the chapter that that gives you a basic ideology in finding different unmeasurable quantities like thermodynamic, like entropy and all, which physically there are no devices to measure the things. Okay, so this chapter plays a good role in thermodynamics in finding or in establishing the connections between the properties which you can measure directly from the systems and the properties that you cannot measure directly. So this chapter of thermodynamic relations basically provides an interlink or formulations to calculate the unmeasurable properties with the help of known measurable properties. Okay, so I broadly classify this course into these nine chapters that we deal with and during the course of this uh, four or five chapters, uh, the first four or five chapters, these are really important because you know, you will be getting all the fundamentals in this first, first four or five chapters. Okay, so I want you to learn this four or five chapters, first four or five chapters in a very keen way so that the later parts could be of way ease to you to understand the things. Okay, so now coming to the books. So whatever you understand in the class, that's fine. But really I suggest a book reading for this particular course because it, this course is an interactive kind of course. So you should find some good books to read the concepts that I'm delivering you to have a better idea. And some books I could visit, I mean, I could recommend you is, for this course is, you can always go for one very good book, Thermodynamics and Engineering Approach An engineering approach by Singel and Bulls. This is one really good book in thermodynamics that explains all the concepts in a very good way. So you can go for this thermodynamics uh, by Singel and Bulls always. And second book that you could go for is Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics. Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics. Engineering Thermodynamics by Moen and Sapio. This is also a really good book. In case of in case of learning this, all these things like this chapters which I have written later, like entropy, availability, and all, which were very well explained in this second book, Fundamentals of uh, engineering thermodynamics by Moen and Sapio. Okay, next third book you can always go for one good book again. Thermodynamics Basic and Applied. Basic and Applied by V. Ganesan. 
which is also available in the market for you so that this this third book provides you an in-depth understanding of the problems actually so that are to be solved using the concepts of this downward dynamics okay so this third book is a very good book in case of solving some quite a good interesting problems in downward dynamics and along with all these books if you want me to recommend one more book i would like to tell you downward engineering downward dynamics basically you can write engineering downward dynamics engineering thermodynamics by pk nand which is really uh, one nice book in thermodynamics so that you can have a multiple overview of different kinds of problems that are being asked in gate examination so that all these four books could help you out and first two books could especially give you the idea of clear idea of concepts and also some practical applications that you would consider and these two books are really good books for problem solving and that suit more of get standard questions okay so these are the four books that i would like to suggest at this point of time for you to continue with this along with this course okay so coming to the course uh, delivery and all after every module see basically i have divided this course into nine chapters which you have seen here so these nine chapters basically after I divide this course into nine modules where each module corresponds to each chapter and after completion of every module i will be giving you uh, some previous gate questions to solve and i will be solving those questions along with you on the board here so that we both can understand the concepts in a good way and apply those concepts while solving these questions okay and apart from this classroom problems that i solved here i would also give you some practice worksheet for you so that if you have any doubts you can assess me okay for solving the problems in that and i hope uh, this is how uh, we are clear how we are progressing in the course okay so this this lecture i th initially thought of intending it only for the course structure that i would go throughout this course and from tomorrow from 10 am that that means like in the morning 10 am this course starts and 10 to 11:30 we have a class every day okay so one and a half hour session that we are going to have every day like uh, on from monday to saturday from 10 10, 10 o'clock to 11:30 p 11:30 am okay so one and a half course duration so i hope we are clear how we are going to advance in this course with time and different kinds of problems that we meet so coming to contact if you have any uh, issues at any point you can always write to one mail id which is this at gmail.com you can always uh, write to me Uh, write it to me to this mail if you have any doubts you can always put a screenshot of the question or if you have some doubt in the concept that we discussed you could always talk to me in the live class if i see the question comments here i'll be answering your questions here itself but if you have to uh, if you have to assess me for some other things you can always write to this mail id okay so that i'll be answering all your questions all in this platform here clear so is that fine as of now so basically this is how we are going to advance in this course and you know Uh, basically from tomorrow we'll start this course and we'll see you sharp at 10 am tomorrow okay is that fine is everything clear about the course timing and the idea of the course how we are going to proceed ahead if that yes then i would like to end this session for you since this is just a course introduction session and uh, we could end up the session here okay okay then thank you all uh, we'll meet you sharp at 10 am tomorrow okay take care